Welcome back to the Nerd Rotic Podcast. My name is Gary Beekler. I'm live in San Francisco, California, and I come to you from nerdrotic.com. And down in San Diego, fresh off a walk in the dog, is Dennis Bethalkis. What's up, man? And that's no euphemism either. No, that was literal, man. Uh, did uh, yes. Pepper uh, take care of business? Uh, she got spooked a little bit by some dogs, so I, I, I don't think she has completed her business now. The, the no, oh, well, I guess you're going back out again. Uh, I'll go back out again, yes, later on. The, the neighborhood uh, pit bulls there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think they would have scared something out of her, but no, they didn't. No, no. Nah. Nah, they're probably just attracted to her. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres, yeah. She looks tasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, We're so we're here covering... Uh, the last three episodes of The Tick, uh, episodes 10, 11, and 12. Um, uh, 10 is Risky Bismuth. Uh, 11 is the beginning of the end. And oh my God, the, the last one is a long one. It's, uh, what is it? The end of the beginning of the dawn of the age of, superheroes. of superheroes. Yes. Yeah, which I could not fit in the title because it was too damn long. So, uh, So The Tick is over just like that. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to start out. Uh, the only complaint I have is not about the show itself is about how they drop this thing. Um, and binge viewing, um, or binge when you drop everything all at once, I think, uh, my argument besides the selfish one for recapping is it's out of, it's out of the public eye too, too quick. You know, people consume it too fast or they put it off too long or they never finish it. I, I just don't think it's it's a good strategy. You can it's always there to binge later. I think you should drop it once, you know, once a week. I don't think they should have split the series now that I've no. watched it in two halves. It was uh, the, the first half was the stronger half. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it would have been better seeing this all at once. <laughs> and plus, it's so short. You know, it's the episodes are 20 something minutes long. It'd be easy to, to binge. So yeah, people are going to consume this, watch it and like it and then forget about it in days instead of dropping each episode and having people talk about it over weeks, you know, and then that's just, that's free marketing right there. So um, it's getting a season two and that's great. And it's a great show, but I don't see enough people talking about it. Uh, and I think this is, you know, people will get around to it, um, but not everybody has Amazon Prime. I, you know, I'm I'm curious, Dennis. Like, how many? I, I I think Netflix has more subscribers to their service than Amazon. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Um, but yeah, it's. I agree with you. It, this should have been dropped. You know, uh, one one a week, basically like a regular TV series, not uh, binge. You know, and then also this awful splitting it in half and dumping it months later it, it just uh yeah it was just bad yeah and 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 when they you know they announced it kind of early but not right away you know like when they decided to have the season they should have told us like the uh, right after the last episode like it premieres again you know at this time you know in, in uh what was it late february so and oh god it, it was uh around comic-con when it came out right it was right after comic-con well, uh yeah, i remember august they did the first episode back in 2016 that's right and so that was part of their uh you know uh they had three three or four different shows that they did a pilot for so you watch the pilot and then you voted on it so i was one of those people that watched the first one in 2016 i voted on it of course i voted yes and um then they said, okay, we're making a series of it. So they released the first half in 2007. Well, they basically started, continued from episode one. They left episode one as episode one and then started from there. And then they stopped at episode six because uh, they wanted to do this. I think it was Ben Edlin who came out and said, yeah, we decided that, you know, we don't want people just to binge it all at once. We want to let them savor it. And then we're going to bring the other part out a couple months later which I don't think it was his idea. That was more Amazon's more than anything else. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's kind of wacky. I'm glad. It, I hope they do things differently next time. Not sure. Uh, uh, yeah. The, 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 it seemed, they seem to like it. I guess their marketing research says it's good. Um, I'm not too sure it is. We'll see. I don't I think, think it I, is. Yeah. I think, yeah, too many things get forgotten about, especially if they're not extraordinary. My argument is the defenders, something, 
that should have been better. Sorry. And uh, something that people should have been talking about uh, to today. And it got forgotten about within a week. It was just like, eh, you know, um, with your successes with Daredevil, that's that's the rare exception. So I don't know. Start. Sorry to start off all negative there. Uh, and hello, everybody in the chat. What's up, Jody, Viking bitch, uh, Apple Crow, we're Robobrain 10,000. And uh, I, uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. But if I am, I'll catch you later. So let's start with episode 10, Risky Bism Bismuth. And uh, we start out where uh, the tick still thinks he's a robot after having a conversation with back. Well, it was kind of a one sided conversation with backup. Uh, and was well, it? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like he, he was responding to him. All we heard was uh, the AOL connection thing. Yeah, the <laughs> dial up connection. Was. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, that, was, that brings back good memories. Um, not really. Um, so, yeah. So the tick thinks he's a robot. And <laughs> my vastly, comp what, my vastly uh, superior, superior computer, computer frame. Computer frame. <laughs> I'm computing. Uh, yeah. So, and then uh, Karamasov uh, is, he's, his head is enlarged, so he's in bad shape. Um, and Arthur runs back inside. Uh, uh, Tinfoil Kevin lives, lives inside a giant robot head, which is kind of a callback to Guardians of the Galaxy a little bit, you know, being inside of, uh, being uh, inside that uh, Celestial's head. Um, and uh, he has put uh, Dr. Karamasov inside of Backup's body. Mm-hmm. So he, he never really cured himself, uh, <laughs> but I guess his head is in there all snug and he can work the control. So you only end up seeing like half his face all the time, <laughs> which is hilarious and uh, so typical for this show. Um, I, this humor never gets old to me. Dennis. No, no, it's, it's really good. I mean, they, um, it's, it's plays into our wheelhouse of humor. Uh, it's, it's witty. It's also punny, and uh, you know, and it's also kind of snarky too, at you know at the same time. But then it's also kind of sweet. You know, yeah. it's got a little bit of everything. It's got a little bit of heart, you know. Um, and then you know, we go to one of like uh, my takeaway from this is, ah, oh, man, I love Overkill and and Miss Lint. I, <laughs> they're my two favorite characters. So Miss Lint is talking to the Pyramid Gang. And they're not the Pyramid Gang anymore. And they're talking about, we need a new group identity, you know, because uh, we used to be called the Pyramid Gang. We really liked that. We felt better. And what she's like, why don't you call yourselves the Shit for Brain Gang? Yeah. Not like that. Shit for Brains. And then uh, her ex comes out. What was his name again? Uh, the IT guy. Uh, oh, I can't God. Remember his name. I can't remember his name either. Jeez. Uh, uh, oh, just, it's like some hipstery name. But uh, Derek. Derek. Derek, yeah. <laughs> uh, the kind of guy who would ride a trike. Um, and he has one in there. And this is the only time we see him. He comes back out and he's like, uh, what's going on? Were there darts? Uh, yeah, no. he goes, oh, why am I missing? Did I have a beard? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. So, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. So, hopefully, we get more of him. He was actually that whole thing with Miss Lint, right, where she still lives with her ex. She's in love with Overkill. She was sent to break his heart, and she did her job, but she ended up falling in love with him, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we'll get into later. It's pretty hilarious. Um, and her glass eye thing, and I love how they always they put like little swirlies in it. She's got decorative glass eyes, like maniacally decorative glass eyes, which are brilliant. Um, and she's really good at just doing her, the fa her facial expressions of just being annoyed. Yeah, being uh, pissed she, off that, that kind of like I smell something bad. Yeah, <laughs> she's really good at that. Oh, man. So um, uh, then we have a quick scene of Dot uh, going back to her uh, roller rink uh, where that guy um, kind of stitches back up all the bad guys and she's been helping them. Uh, she overhears a phone conversation and records it with her cell phone. Um, and, and that's a quick little scene. And yeah, then... He tells her, uh, it's Stosh is his name. Yeah. And uh, he says, oh, this is the kind of stuff you don't want to get involved with, so you better leave. Which is a running theme. Everybody's like, oh, little Dot, you go over here. You know, yeah. you, you can't help us. It's too dangerous for you. And da 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 da. Yeah. She fights that pretty good, though. Yeah. She, she she's does. an infiltrator, that little Dot. Um, 
and then we get uh, back to Dr. Karamazov and Arthur is is trying to get his head around this uh, this idiotic plan that the terror has, which is he brings up. He's like, that plan is stupid. <laughs> so the plan is basically that uh, this bismuth uh, it was injected inside of the VLM, and it's basic. It's superior. It's superior's kryptonite, um, supposedly. Uh, yeah. And they want to, so they want to make a giant man and then blow him up near Superion to kill him. And Arthur's all, that's stupid plan. <laughs> He's yeah. all, but that's what the terror does. His plans make no sense. So, and, and Arthur's like, well, well, how did this all start? I'm paraphrasing there. And, and Dr. Karamoslov, well, we have to go back to the beginning. <laughs> and he's all, I was, I struggled as a child. He's all that far back. I was a, I was a poor little, I was a poor starving boy that far back. Do we really have to go that far back? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. I live in the town of Grote, where all we had to eat was potatoes and acorns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, we get a little... Uh, and they kind of pepper this through two episodes with uh, uh, this little doctor with a wig. And, he, you know, he's kind of effing up all his experiments. He was able to enlarge one potato. Yeah. So uh, he could never get because the uh, well he oh well, that's right he found the bismuth because uh, in in the, the the custom in their country is to uh, what yodel, yodel or jump off a cliff jump off a cliff and uh, it's, he decided yodel, yodel or jump off a cliff yeah that's yeah. <laughs> and he goes I decided to yodel in the mountain she decided to avalanche <laughs> <laughs> so Which in the avalanche. What? Might be my favorite quote, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then during the avalanche, he sees bismuth, which is, I, I guess, alien part of the... I don't know if it was part of that alien ship from the beginning. I think so, yeah. Uh, I think it was, too, because it just exploded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then Tixel, destiny shook the snow globe for you on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so um it shows the background of okay, so Armenia is a country of evil scientists. Yeah, mad science evil mad scientists. Yes. And uh yeah, they said that uh so I was showing my experiment uh to the government and uh the UN leaders and Superion was there as usual because he kept an eye on our government. <laughs> 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 Basically anything that they did. He had to be there for to keep an eye on them just so they didn't do anything really super evil. <laughs> yeah. So we think. So we think at this yeah. point in time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> but uh, the machine exploded because uh, big bismuth is, uh, you know, unstable. And so instead of enlarging the potato, it uh, turned into a shrink ray and shrunk the doctor down and then exploded. <laughs> <laughs> And Superion reacted to that. He kind of covered himself, uh, and that's important later. Uh, then we cut over uh, to Dot. Uh, she's in Danger Boat, uh, bringing Overkill this intel that she got what, that was recorded on her phone. And you know, Overkill's and his not gun. impressed. Uh, and oh, she brought his gun back. All right, and she gave his gun back. <laughs> and he goes, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> you fired this fifty-two. No, 53 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So he's not impressed with her. He called it low-level thug chatter and uh, then grabbed her her arm, pissed her off, so she left. And uh, and then uh, Danger Boat saw, this is why one of us doesn't have any friends. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we all need a friend like Danger Boat in our lives, yeah. don't we? We do. Um <laughs> And you got to remember, Danger Boat is a is an Aegis supercomputer, prison. Uh, what is it? It's a prison boat, uh, gunship, uh, kill boat as well. <laughs> with the <laughs> That's cannon, on rogue. with a shower that doubles for a ca a launch cannon. Yeah, I need one of those, man. That sounds dope. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I love what he's talking about. Uh, you know, you don't have the experience like I do. You know, I was. What squatting in rainforests, drinking my own urine? Why are you drinking urine in a rainforest? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and the other thing we did not cover 
last uh, recap that we totally forgot is Terror's takeover of Brown Tingle Cola. <laughs> well, that didn't happen until uh, until this episode, the Risky Bismuth. Did that did that happen in the beginning? I yeah, thought it beginning. happened. Well, either way, it it, uh, it it when he takes over Brown Tingle Cola, this is like one of the most hardcore scenes because he, he t- he's he t- basically says that like I created this, I put the yeah. secret ingredient in. And then he tells the guy to get out of his chair. And then one of his minions just cuts the guy's throat right there. It's like, yeah. whoa, <laughs> damn. <laughs> uh, and then every, when, the, when the blood's going out on the board, everybody's just moving their laptops. <laughs> but they don't move. They don't leave. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's so he's he's going to Brown Tingle Cola with the secret ingredient. And he's going to have his big coming out party. And it's all going to be centered around um, Superion's death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I love that Brown Tingle Cola of, of course has the giant T in, in yes. between, you know, BTC and uh, it, you know, I should have seen it coming, but I did it, which is I kind of either. the genius of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. That was, that was hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. My, uh, Logan was laughing his ass off when that happened. <laughs> He's all snorting. It's funny. funny when my kid <laughs> snorts. He was laughing. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, so okay, so Miss Lint, um, he calls Miss Lint, and Dot follows Miss Lint, and she, uh, he's, uh, what was he calling her? But he called her in the middle of her getting ready for that to, to go to that uh, place to shoot the signal out to the VLM, and uh, the terror calls her. Um, I forgot what he called her about. Now I just spaced my brain there. Um, um, but uh, I don't know if talking- it was about the pig or not. Um, I think it that was, was yeah, truly- it was the pig. Yes, it was about no, the pig. About the pig, yes, because uh, they were doing the whole um, marketing campaign about how to bring him out, and they're like, "Well, you could stroke a cat," and he's like, "I, I don't know about that. I don't like cats." Too and, cliche. Yeah, too cliche. <laughs> and uh, so she goes, and all of a sudden he, he, you know, we cut away from him to the executive, and we cut back, and he's holding a pig. He's like. How did I get a pig in my lap? <laughs> I just thought we'd try that out. <laughs> like you said he didn't like the cat. I go, we're going to open up to maniacal laughter. He's like, I can't just summon maniacal laughter. Okay. Yeah. And then she, that one girl hits the other guy in the head with something from the desk. <laughs> and he chuckles. He's all, that was a maniacal chuckle. <laughs> what am I going to do with that? Uh, yeah. And, and so he had ex- he texted uh, Miss Lent the photo of the pig. And she's yep. like, what am I looking at? He goes, it's me with a pig. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell well, her she looks it, annoyed. Is it bad or is is it bad or is it bad, bad? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because that's the question I ask you about stuff from this podcast all the time. <laughs> In the best, it's true, it is. <laughs> is this bad or is it bad, bad? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so uh, we're still getting uh, pieces of Doctor. K- they they peppered in the the origin of Doctor Kas- uh, uh, Kasimazov or whatever the hell it is, Karamazov. and uh, yeah, Karamazov. Um, and it, it's just him blowing shit up. He keeps blowing shit up, but his uh, his government. Um, he found out the properties of Big Bismuth, Bismuth, and his government found out he continued working on it, even though he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Uh, but they were down with it because they're tired of Superion busting uh, his government or the government for all their human rights atrocities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he continued working on it, but then the terror stole all of his plans, and that's oh, how the terror and all got the big him. Bismuth too, and all the big bismuth. And he said, until the tick blew up all that big bismuth when he blew up the downtown <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hey, so, that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> and um, so you got to remember also Superion at this point is sick. He's in Arthur's bed um, and he's heating up. He starts having a fever, like really like super fever, if you will. Um, and they put him in a bathtub and of course have to go and get ice and they're just dumping ice on him uh, to cool him down. And of course, just it's turning to steam at this point. And they're trying to figure out why, you know, uh, Dr. Karamazov keeps saying, well, he should be getting better because he's away from the VLM. So he should start getting better because it should be working its way through his system. And they can't figure out what it is. And then finally, when Dr. Karamazov finishes his story about, you know, the tick, he's a, that's it. The tick. He's covered in big bismuth from the explosion. And he's in proximity. And he's, he's basically making Superior sick. 
So they get the tick out of there. And and the tick's depressed. Remember the first time he leaves, he's depressed because he comes to the realization that, uh, you know, a- Arthur talked to him, you know, about being the robot. He's like, listen, you couldn't make these decisions. And, he, he, you know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't want to like follow destiny unless I was programmed to. Uh, <laughs> and she's, all, you know, and so he's, he comes to realization that he's not a robot and he's back to being really depressed. So Arthur goes out and gives him a little pep talk. And that's when Superior uh, gets better. Uh, when they do that flashback, to the to the first step ep- the pilot episode of the tick it mm. really does look like it came out two years ago I, and, yeah. and i know it's the different costume and that costume was pretty bad actually <laughs> the, the, i'm glad they changed it to the one they have now yeah yeah with the ginormous cod piece i don't know if you guys noticed that <laughs> I, I noticed that because when he stands sideways <laughs> like, oh that's wrong oh, god <laughs> uh, i was like damn dude uh okay uh <laughs> So yeah, it, but that was it. Was I was like, God, man, it feels like so long ago. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so and, the, so yeah. So um, basically, once they find out that he's covered in big bismuth, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, they they list him for Kevin to uh, vacuum it off of him. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to get deep up in it, something he like has, that. Yeah, he has to get into the into the cracks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just it's funny. I mean, when he gets into the yeah, he, he goes down below there, and you hear the tickle. Whoa, hey! <laughs> and he goes, you know what? I got to get all of it. That means I got to go in all the you know all the different naughty spots there. And uh, what was the ticks? What did he say there? Uh, if it's oh God, he had a really great line too. And well, I, he I, said, "You got to get up in my business, bismuth. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get up in my business to get that bismuth." That's what it was. <laughs> so, meanwhile, back at the you know typical superhero warehouse where superheroes only superhero things go, where they fight thugs. That generic warehouse where superheroes are always fighting thugs. Uh, uh, Overkill confronts. Um, Miss Lint, uh, who's about to send the signal to the VLM, uh, and uh, they have—he's got this like w- girdle on or something like that. You know, what she calls she's all nice. She shoots him, and it like all the power goes to this girdle. She's all nice girdle, and she's all hello, Esteban. <laughs> 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 oh man, I don't know his name being Esteban cracks me up. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny, and the way she says it. And uh, yeah, so they had a history. Obviously, the terror had set uh, had wasn't happy enough taking the poor man's eyes and cutting off his hands. He had to have his heart too. Yeah. Um, so, and also, uh, you got to remember, uh, Overkill and uh, had met Dot. Uh, yeah. Because Dot when Dot snuck in, and she was like, "What are you doing here? Uh, I thought you said my plan was, you know, sucked. Uh, I changed my mind." <laughs> <laughs> I'm and, sorry about grabbing your hand. Yeah. And so basically he sends her down to the basement to go and cut the power to whatever they're doing up on the roof with the antenna. And he goes up to go and confront them. With them being the henchmen and, and Miss Lint. And uh, this is when we get uh, Dot finally cuts the power and she monologues a little bit, <laughs> which I kind of liked. You know? It was good. Yeah. She's like, you don't understand. I don't need the power. I am the power. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a badass scene. I like yeah. that. And she just grabs onto that cable and <laughs> and sends out the signal. <laughs> <laughs> just the, I, I, if uh, okay, if for some reason you're watching us and you haven't seen this, the best part about it is she needs her bracelets because the one flaw of her power is she's called Miss Lint because she attracts Miss everything Lint. floating. She walks around and uh, she blows up a vacuum cleaner in like the second or third episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, still funny. So yeah, she uh, she is the power. She blew it up, and they uh, she grabbed Esteban, and uh, yeah. Uh, but th- then she discovers uh, she being Miss Lent discovers that Esteban is not working alone, and she gets exactly. a little jealous. She goes, "Did you bring a date?" <laughs> and he goes, uh, "He goes, I didn't bring anybody." And she goes, "Wait, so you're not saying you didn't say it wasn't a date?" <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
Oh my god! Oh, it's just making me laugh. I mean, it's just one thing after another. And and by the way, so this signal that went out actually attracts the VLM to start walking towards the city. So he starts, you know, he turns on, he's like, oh, and starts walking towards the city. Oh, yeah, I know. And uh, yeah, it did th th that's pretty damn funny too. I, I, I guess being big, he can't communicate, or you know, maybe he is, and it's we're too, it's too slow. I have no idea, but it's just the look on his face and the whole thing with the VLM was freaking funny yeah and they're always pixelating out because of course he doesn't have uh any clothes on they're pixelating out a very uh, uh important the anatomy part yes the, the VLM. VLM. yes <laughs> <laughs> you can work that uh, acronym out yourself ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right so we get to our next episode which is uh, that's where the episode ends and uh again i marvel that these things are like 27 minutes long and they're great it's like yeah it's perfect uh, so, uh, episode 11 is the beginning of the end, which is sad because we're getting close to the end. Yeah. And, uh, I guess the one good thing is splitting it up is they probably already started production on the second season and we won't have to wait that long. Um, hopefully. And yeah. hopefully, and, you know, like I said, they got to just space it out. Yeah. Really totally. space it out. So we got, uh, the VLM working its way towards the city. Um, uh, Superion is completely spaced out. He's looking at a globe and spinning it, going, Am I flying, Am I flying? right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Arthur goes. I'm gonna go get the bucket. <laughs> yep. And and goat comes up and he's all pissed because they bought a hundred and seventy-five dollars worth of ice. And then he's twenty bucks, yeah. Yeah, he sees Superion and he wants to take a picture, and Arthur's all hell no. Um, so Arthur's still trying to get his head around like what the whole plan was, even though like Dr. Karamazov is like explaining it over and over again. He's like, yo, didn't I tell you? Didn't I say that? You know, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, so they need to basically it's, they need to, you know, like I said, blow up the VLM, um, to kill superior and they're going to draw superior out. So what's going to be the, de what's the detonation device? And it was Arthur's suit. Yes. Arthur's suit is supposed to be what detonates the VLM. So this is an overcomplicated lame plan. <laughs> And Superion, or Hyperion, Superion, excuse me, Hyperion, Superion, and there we go. Yeah, yeah, Superion, Superion, yes, uh, actually is lucid for a moment, and he goes, you got to remember, the terrorist plants are always really dumb. Yep. <laughs> they make no sense. And that's about all he gets before he starts, you know, spacing Losing out again. again. Yeah. And when we see Tick again, uh, he, they, they finish vacuuming up the bismuth, and he's all robbed of a sparkle I never knew I had. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so um they work out that uh it's arthur's suit they're gonna uh reverse the process or whatever uh they're gonna well, reverse the polarity there was a uh something a little vial inside his suit that was actually the uh the, the ray uh part of the ray uh, uh a device that was actually inserted into the suit by the terror and that was what was supposed to uh kind of make him explode if i remember correctly Yep. Was it? Yeah. Yep. It was supposed to make them explode. So they're going to reverse it to shrink down the VLM. Yeah. And uh, hope, but uh, Superior still can't go anywhere near him because it's going to be filled with uh, bismuth, right? So. Yep. Exactly. Uh, but hopefully, it's going to work. Problem is, it's only it, it's only got a twenty percent chance of uh, success, <laughs> which is kind of running for what he's been doing. Yeah. Been, and he goes, "What you mean? It's a twenty percent chance of failure? No, no, no." 20% chance of success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get uh, uh, a fun little scene with uh, Overkill uh, getting tortured by Miss Lint. Um, and, you know, she's kind of going over, you've been in town, you've been killing my henchmen. And, and you, you haven't stopped. <laughs> yeah, you didn't, you didn't stop <laughs> Why didn't you call? <laughs> and then he's all, is this a torture part? Because you're boring me to death. <laughs> <laughs> and Dot's running around the building. Uh, she grabs one of the henchmen's gun and is trying to find Overkill. And Overkill and Miss Lynn are clearly just flirting at this point, like monologue flirting. Yes. Uh, and uh, what does he say? Janet, I saw the good in you. And she, she's all, that's not what you were attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> he's all, mm, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he keeps telling her, you know, he knows that she could be good and, you know, uh, and she's like, no, that's just the way I am kind of thing. And yeah, they keep going back and forth. And, and finally, you know, uh, the sprinklers go off and dot bursts in with the gun 
And she goes, don't use it. She goes, don't, you know, you can't do anything. You do it. You fry yourself. She goes, oh, really smart. And she's got the gun trained on Miss Lynch. She goes, I'm taking him with me. We're getting out. And before, you know, they're almost at the door. And she walks back and go, and both of you, you really need some couples, you know, some therapy, not couples therapy, individual therapy. Individual therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It helps. Believe me. Um, okay. So. Uh, then we got the the ad execs are outside of the terror's office and he's drumming badly by the way mm -hmm. and, uh, and really like, frantically too so yep and uh you could tell they're like is this good drumming or bad drumming i can't tell <laughs> <laughs> i know oh <laughs> uh, and he comes out of course and he's destroyed multiple drum sets you see multiple destroyed drum sets within the uh, boardroom and he's just pissed because the, the plan is not going according to plan. <laughs> the plan is not going to plan. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I know I recognize that damn song he's been playing from something. Okay. I'm no jazz fan, not a fan of the jazz. Uh, it, but uh, Joss Whedon is okay. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, Much Ado About Nothing had tons of jazz in it and a lot of his brother's music. Um, but in Avengers Age of Ultron, during the scene where they're trying to pick up the hammer, mm -hmm. that the drumming in the background is the same song that, uh, that oh. Terror's been playing. I guess it's kind of an on-the-nose jazz tune, actually. So, I, again, I don't know. We'll never know. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. The useless information here. That's what we're good for. Was it bad? Exactly. Bad? <laughs> <laughs> the plan was not going according to plan. The plan, yes. But yeah, <laughs> pissed off that Superion is missing and he's not in there. He's losing his he's losing his groove. Yeah. Um. So he decides to, he kind of susses out that uh, Arthur must have found the professor, or maybe they found the professor, and he says to find out everything about Arthur's family or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna make a tree. <laughs> just kind of like what Arthur did for uh for terror being alive. Terror is doing the same thing with Arthur's family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we get a good scene of Arthur talking to Superion uh when he's sick in bed because he's some you know he's he's a little better now. And uh Arthur, you know, is just questioning like well, you know, why do you do this? And uh and we get some something some interesting stuff out of uh they talked about big bismuth and uh superior superior goes oh that stuff always hated that stuff and he's all wait what um and he's all what's that about and he's all baggage um so and then they told him the terror is alive and he's all well i've always wondered about that you know they found his teeth yeah i know about his teeth uh <laughs> and then, everyone then keeps asked, mentioning the teeth <laughs> yep and then arthur asked him was like why do you help us and he and he says because i want to be a good person so um I think, uh, and we and we don't find out this season, by the way, uh, we mm -hmm. find out a couple more hints, but that was the biggest hint that, uh, I think superior it might not be good, might not be what he is, might be, mm -hmm. uh, might be made by Ermania. Uh, I think he might be Ermanian, especially with just the hint of, oh, I always hated that stuff. Um, see, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I think, uh, so what I've been thinking is, is that Earth is actually a prison kind of thing. And okay, that's out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I'm going way out wow, there. You're going Jehovah's Witness on us, man. <laughs> and that he's actually one of the prisoners as well. So he's you know Superion, and he's just kind of trying to help the other prisoners, if you will, because of something that happens at the end. Uh, you know, here. Uh, okay, we'll get to that. Yeah, because of the drones at the end. No, no, I'll, I'll, we'll okay. we'll get to it. I don't hear that. Okay, that'd be interesting. Um. Uh. Oh, yeah. C considering what uh, the terror says. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yes. one way to look at it. Okay. We'll get it. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. It clicked. It clicked for me. I get there eventually. <laughs> like I said, I, I figured once we got there, you didn't get there. Yeah, but, but I, I. That's not what I saw. It. I. I saw it more as a Lex Luthor thing, not as a prison thing. More of a, I want to take it back for humanity, but again, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, they figure out like Arthur's going to go ahead and go on this suicide mission. So we are completing Arthur's hero's journey, yes. um, which has been pretty solid. Again, it was interrupted for a long time, 
and I would have probably, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't think the last six were as good as the first six, but yeah, it might've been because of the big split and I got to watch them all together and they probably are way better that way. Not saying they're bad in any way, shape or form, but I just, I don't know. I just thought the first six were funny. Um, so uh, Arthur goes on the su suicide mission. Uh, he also finds out he has uh, hand tasers because uh, his thing has been uh, moved to English now. Yeah. And he's all, I got hand tasers. Awesome. Yeah. I love how he's still going through the, uh, you know, scrolling through the, uh, the the menu with the head. Oh, yeah, I know. He's all <laughs> shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> that, that first scene where he's doing it, where he's talking to Miss Lynn, and she's looking at him like, what the fuck are you doing? He's yeah. all... <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah See, but when he, when he goes to go fight the henchman uh, you know and uh you know and uh when yeah. he's escaping from the lair and he's 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 doing this you, you see him do it a little bit he gets to the tasers oh okay <laughs> he nods <laughs> uh so um lint uh offered uh to help before she got she broken out she actually offered to help esteban uh kill the terror yeah um, she uh she, well, she says yeah we can we can kill him and i because i already have control of the city and basically you know if we kill him uh then i can take over the city basically is what she says it's she gave, basically gave the darth vader speech if we kill the emperor together we can rule the galaxy <laughs> together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh and uh, he doesn't think about it because he doesn't trust her. And she's all, well, yeah, you know, they got trust issues. And then Dot breaks her out. But I thought it was important to bring that up because uh, she, you know, she said, you know, things just aren't the way they used to be with uh, me and the terror. Yeah. You know, trust issues. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't, go, you can't go back home again sometimes, man. So, um, uh, so yeah, yeah so, so midnight, the, we're, we've got the flag five memorial going on. Um, right. Hang on, second. Viking bitch. She says, uh, "Yeah, uh, he." She said, "I can't do it myself because he's kind of my mentor." Yes, that's right. So she she wants him to off, uh, and well, plus I think it's actually kind of a gift to him too. Of course, she can't do it because he's a mentor, but she knows how much he wants to, you know, cleave his head in a two. Yeah. Um. So uh, we got the flag five memorial. This is where with this, you know, uh, this whole destiny thing. It's all starting to go down, and uh, we got midnight's going to give a speech there. And uh, Uber uh, or Uber, uh, the tick and Arthur are Ubering over <laughs> to the. So, so you got you didn't watch um, Runaways. Some of you out there did. So Runaways, we had superheroes taking lifts. Okay, we had one of them who could fly taking lifts and making sure to go. Uh, and it was really not subtle. It was like I am going to get a lift. Okay, here is my lift app. I'm going to show it. I'm going to ride in a lift now, even though I can sparkle and fly. Um, the, and so they have Tick and Arthur uh, in a in an Uber, uh, driven by Antonio again. Amazingly, they got the same driver, uh, <laughs> and they're on their way over to the uh, to the to the speech. Uh, and that's where everything's going to go down. So we're going to have the VLM. That's where it's you know it's working its way over there, and uh, none of these people know. So Arthur calls Walter again <laughs> to find out where his mom is. So he can tell her to get the hell out of Dodge because the VLM is on his way. Yeah. And that's when they find out that, yeah, uh, Walter and his mom are both down there at the, at the uh, uh, ceremonies. And <clears throat> doesn't he also find out at this point that the, uh, the terror is gunning for his family as well? Yes. He finds out when, uh, was it Dot who tells him? Yeah, uh, basically the terror has gotten pissed off, and he launches his his giant T ship out of no, the. No, no, that's uh, later. That's later. That's a, we're still in. I'm still in episode eleven, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're still at the end of episode eleven. Uh, I take that back then. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, so the, basically, and that's where they're, where it ends. They're on their way over there, and the VLM is uh, is about to you know. The, the, enter the city. Enter the city. Walter says, uh, "There's something I got to tell you know." tell you about your son to his mom and uh they're going they, they end up confronting the vlm they're there with the military and everything and uh arthur's decided to, to go in uh and they take off and that's kind of where, where it ends it ends right there and then um we start with episode 12 which is uh i'm not going to say that episode title again where i already said it once dawn of the age of superheroes 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's a little longer than that, but yeah, Dawn yeah. of the Age of Superheroes. We're at the end of the beginning of the Dawn of the Age of Superheroes, yeah. and uh, it starts out with uh, the Tick and Arthur taking on the VLM, and uh, the Tick is punching his toe and saying, "This little piggy's not going to market." <laughs> uh, and uh, then, then Arthur flies up uh, to the to the VLM. He's all, "Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm going to press this little button, and it's either going to." uh shrink you and save superior or kill us both um so hi and then he clicks it and then there's like a, it's a, a countdown, countdown. <laughs> he's all oh they didn't tell me about this so yeah. embarrassing this is a countdown <laughs> apparently it's gonna be on like 30 seconds so you're gonna have to wait <laughs> i love that the silence and then you see here his wings just going when it's really long <laughs> so first time visiting the city <laughs> <laughs> yep and then uh Oh, and the, the best scene is with Dot uh, she is driving away with Overkill, and uh, she's all, Dot's all, man, you don't look good. Uh, <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, you look dead. No, no, I died eight minutes ago of cardiac arrest. <laughs> How are you my... still alive? Superior training, indomitable will, and military grade Adderall. <laughs> yeah, and and a lot of rage. <laughs> and a lot of rage. <laughs> And then he just dies. <laughs> so yeah, so um, Overkill's de dead, and uh, Dot is trying to revive him. And uh, that's yeah, I think that's what she calls Arthur. And uh, I I can't remember. She calls Arthur about. She oh no, she said um, she calls Arthur later about the terror. That's what she called Arthur about. It was like the terror getting away yeah. at Brown Tingle Cola. Uh, but the Superior shows up right before the countdown finishes. And he's, you know, acting drunk. He's, I'm here to save you and the M and M, you know. And uh, Arthur's like, uh, you got like three seconds, and the thing, poof, thing explodes, and it's a big purple cloud. And uh, it was right before the uh, the terror got hit. You know, he's like, okay, positions. I've got my little detonator button, and he's about to press it, and uh, he didn't press nothing it. Happens. Yeah, nothing happens. So he's starting well, to get pissed. It actually, uh, explodes beforehand. He goes, I didn't push the detonator. You push yep. the detonator, and he goes, my detonator didn't work. So. That's when he gets pissed off and he goes, okay, everyone, let's go. And they, they get aboard the, we didn't know this, but the T ship is actually the big T in the big BTC and just pulls out of the building and starts flying towards, you know, <laughs> uh, this thing, you know, the, the, the flag five reunion or uh, dedication. <clears throat> Cause he's going to kill everybody there <laughs> at this point, since uh, nothing else is working. <laughs> into his favor and uh at this point the vlm has shrunk down um arthur uh is starting to fall and the tick catches him of course no the tick and finds him he falls finds he him. falls and superior falls and tick tick runs up and finds him and just back to the t ship which is yeah fucking hilarious yes but um you uh, the teen titans live in a giant t building now i haven't read a, a teen titans comic in like two years okay but uh even in the jeff johns run they were still living in a t building so as much as we're laughing at this ship but i don't laugh at the fact that the teen titans live in a t building yeah uh yeah and i still say that the t building is actually based off of the same technology that hyperion's superior ship came from oh definitely because that one ship that came down kind of looked like it uh, yeah. in the beginning. I think so. Now, um, uh, we'll get to the ending because I think part of the ending was slapped on. And I think a lot of it, they did. They gave it thought, but I don't think they filmed it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's when, uh, yeah, they said we're going off script. And uh, Tick finds Arthur. And he's like, you're a prevailer, chum. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, you know, so they said they find the VLM. He's back to normal size. Uh, Tick smacks him on the ass. <laughs> there you go, sailor. <laughs> I'll get you some pair. I'll give you a pair of pants. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Superior falls from the sky as well. And he's all right. And he's like, you know, he goes, Bismuth hangover. Hate that stuff. And yeah. at this point, we've got the T flying in. Oh, now, before the T took off, we did find out what the uh, secret ingredient was. Yes, a uh, little on the nose with this one. Uh, one drop of the terror's pee in every single bottle. <laughs> did that girl take a sip after she said "good one, sir"? Yeah, I think she I did. Think she did. She's all good one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, that poor ad exec. Um, yeah, so the T's flying around, and uh, they have uh, the minions have abducted Walter and uh, Arthur's mom. So uh, the tick goes to bring the ship down, and Arthur uh, gets his little stunning thing going. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love how these, he's just such a shitty fighter, too. He's just kind of like, he's like grabbing like fear tag or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, we, you know, uh, Walter, or excuse me, uh, Arthur's mom uh, screams out for him and Walter. And we see Walter all suddenly has three guys that are surrounding him. And he's got a bag over his head. They both have bags over their heads. And Walter all of a sudden like throws his hands down, disarms these, or, you know, gets these guys' hands off him, and then starts kicking their ass. Yep. Like, you know, martial arts style, just taking them down and with the bag on his head still, mind you. Yeah. This is yeah, this is all like Daredevil style. And uh that was a cool scene. And then it, the fight ended, and Arthur saw him is like what happened? He's all, I thought you did the Walter's all. I thought you did this. So he plays yeah. it off. I thought he was going to tell him right there, but no, he, he straight up played it off. So yeah, there's something up with Walter now. And, uh, yeah, no now Dennis thinks it's, he's a hiding superhero, which I definitely, that yeah. is definite possibility. I think he might be an Aegis agent. Um, um a lot of people both. in the, in the chat here think he might be Paul, the samurai. Uh, that would be awesome. That, that would, would be. be awesome. Um, he could be, he could be, uh, that would be cool. I'd be very happy with that. I, yeah. I want them to bring in that I need, they need to bring in the cast of characters from the comics. I, it was cool. Like they kept it small this time, but one of the best things about the tick is, is their cast of characters. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just the puns of all the different characters. I, I mean, even the cartoon, um, uh, one of my favorite cartoon uh superheroes was bipolar bear bipolar <laughs> <laughs> where he says you know he says i'm gonna fight he goes yes i'm gonna go and fight evil but maybe not today <laughs> they, they can't you know what that sucks about the world we live in right now is we they can't do that it's not politically correct to have a bipolar bear um nobody can laugh about anything for oh, Christ's dude, sake. Funny. It's <laughs> funny. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, I, you know, I'm sorry about the bipolar thing and, you know, listen, I, I don't get offended when people drink a beer in front of me. Okay. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, lighten up. Lighten <laughs> up, Francis. Uh, yeah. Um, so the tick has jumped on board the giant T uh, and has beaten the hell out of it. And, and the terror is like, what the hell is that? And Miss Lint is just basically at this point, uh, she's like, you got a giant tick on you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, dude. dude. <laughs> and then he's all, oh, I think I left something in the escape pod. I'll be right back. And uh, well, yeah. before that, um, Miss Lint decides she's had enough and she's going to take over and she's going to fry the terror. And she tries oh, yeah. using this her before they take off in the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And she tries using her uh, lightning. And of course, her uh, gauntlets, her little bracelets light up and heat up. And she's like, ah, and, you know, it hurts. And he says, you really think I'd be stupid enough to, you know, give you my bracelets? He goes, whose bracelets do you think those are? Those are mine. He goes, I'm not going to get them used against me. Well, that's because he figured out he's all I got before they take off. She she kept on asking, like, what do we do? How about we go get overkill to off me? <laughs> and she's like, uh oh. So yeah. jig was up. So then we speed up. We're back in the tra and yeah, uh, yeah. That's he. The terror finds out. You know, it it's not going to end well. So he decides to look for something in the escape capsule. And there's Miss Lint giving him the bird, and well, she takes off. And he and, says, and, "Wait, it's got two seats in it. I oh, can yeah. fit in there. <laughs> I can fit in there." And that's when she gives him the bird. And she takes off, and it's a fucking lowercase t. Yeah, <laughs> that pops out of the t, which is fucking hilarious and then he just turns around and he's like she got me there okay that was a good she one me. that was a good one <laughs> <laughs> uh so so uh miss lint escapes that's the last we see of miss lint um yes and the tea crashes to the ground yeah. uh in the park and everyone scatters of course um the terror comes out and uh basically confronts arthur and says you know he goes, you have screwed up every all my plans, every little bit of it. You were supposed to be the, you know, the part of my plan that was going to work, and you, instead, you had to go and become a superhero. 
<laughs> so he grew he, up. Yeah. So he comes up and he's going to shoot him in the head and puts the gun up against his head. And he's like, so you're going to die. And, and what was it? Uh, the tick said, not the face. <laughs> that's the only part that's not. You that's know, your that's, weakness. He found out your weakness. <laughs> Which is a callback to the cartoon of Arthur, who always used to scream, not the face, not the face. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they even says that. Doesn't he say that? Yeah, he does say the that. Gun, the yeah, he says it. Yeah, that was great. Uh, but then we get the most telling thing of all. Um, you know, the ticks all your plan for world domination is thwarted or something like that. He's all, I'm not trying to take over the world. Trying to take it back. Yeah. That's when Superior shows shows up and freezes him. With yep, he goes. Breath. That's enough of that. Is That's what he's enough saying. of that. Yep. Uh, so right then and there. Okay. So you think because of he said that. Yep. It's some kind of a prison planet. Well, first of all, Aegis, I think, is something that is owned by the Terror. That's something he put together. So, you know, how Aegis hasn't caught him all this, you know, all this time or know that he's there. He's he's got that in his pocket. And, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, they're policing these, quote unquote, superheroes that are around. Well, yeah, we got the at the very end, we get a warning from Midnight. Who, yes. Uh, who congratulates Arthur and then says, Big Brother is watching. He's but always they, watching, <laughs> but they left this kind of open, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it could be a lot of things, but basically the shield of this universe is probably not very nice. Um, and it looks like some heroes are hiding possibly. Uh, and the terror. Well, I, I, yeah, I think he's more of a Lex Luthor. I think he's more of a, we need to get rid of superheroes or uh, yeah, I think he like thinks the hero thing is is bad and wants to get rid of superheroes and he's trying to take his motivation is to take it back for humanity we did not get an origin of the terror i'm looking forward to that yeah uh, that, that's i can't wait to see that there's you know there's a couple different versions of the terror because he was in the fox show as well um yep. and also on the uh the cartoon as well yeah yep so uh yeah i'm looking forward to finding out what's going on uh obviously uh, Superion is not what he is meant to be. And yeah, at the very end, they just have a little chit chat and uh, midnight gives them that little warning. And uh, Arthur's like, God, I wonder what he meant by that. And ticks all, well, I suppose we'll find out. And then there's just a bunch of drones that say Aegis mm -hmm. looking at him. And that's where it ends. So, and I felt like that, that felt like tacked on to me. Like maybe they had the plan, but they had to get the go ahead for season two, you know, cause it, it would have been a clean ending right there they all yeah. you had to do is change a couple of scenes and that was a complete clean ending um so yeah overall really damn good like, oh yeah really damn good i and but this is the like i was not surprised at all that this was good um no i, was I mean full, ben just, Edlin, yeah. yeah it had ben Edlin all over it which you know is never bad no it met all expectations and they're pretty high when it comes to ben Edlin. so yeah uh it was if you had gone to Comic Con, it was all over. Um, they had tick, dude. They had tick hats, right? What, what was all the crap yeah. they were giving away? They if had you, like, phone um, cases, phone cases, hats, uh, antennae, um, shirts. Uh, all the shirts had different sayings because they had an escape room that you uh, that I went through and did it. Um, and water bottles. Um, what else was there? There were uh, fans, like little fans. Then there were people walking around that were giving out like band aid cases uh, for the tick with band aids in it and uh, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Wet wipes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which you actually need. It's a very yeah. handy thing to have. They were giving away very handy things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's tons of giveaways now. That it's It gets getting a little nuts at Comic Con, but the, the tick stood out. For one, it's just giant and blue and it just pops. Uh, but they didn't really do it a lot anywhere else. It, they advertised on some comic books. I don't know how much good that does at all, especially when nobody's reading them right now. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how many people know about uh, know about it or are watching it. I hope they are. I hope they get around to it. Uh, um, I never know the on, ratings on these things. So I've seen it on regular TV. Like uh, they've been putting commercials on and stuff like that. So it is getting out there. Um, Yes, we need a tick flamethrower. We definitely do. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there's, a, there's a there's a Tesla one out there. Yes, there is. Um, and uh, you know, so they have been doing some advertising for this. Uh, I've also seen it on uh, what else? I saw it on net, not Netflix. Uh, well, of course they're advertising on Amazon Prime. You know. Yep. And other shows and stuff like that there. So, so. Candace got a tick T-shirt, a tick antenna, a hat, and the tick. Antennas. Antenna. Like so you went to Comic Con. Very good. Very good. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. It was pretty good this year. Um, not, yeah. not big on the event stuff, but uh, the the outside stuff. And uh, I got to see Len Wein like uh, a month before he died with my kid. That was awesome. Sorry he died, but uh, yeah. Um, the line for that escape room was very long. I went through that whole thing as well, and. Uh, yeah, I was actually joking with the people in line because you have to sign a waiver, oh, you know, before you go in. Uh, and I was about to go, I didn't sign the waiver and just make a boat bolt for it. <laughs> Spoon Pensacola. Uh, Robobrain uh, ten thousand said there was a lot of advertising on Twitch, which is good. Um, oh, you go to San. Uh, oh, I go to SDCC. The tick panel was fun. There you go. She did go to uh, SDCC. Uh, and, uh, um, and yeah, we, we go every year. We're going next year. Um, or God later this year. Yeah. Later this year. Uh, ghost world says, I really hate to sound like a pretentious hipster, but I will. Anyway, comic con is just too big and popular. Now it has been for the last, uh, six, seven years. Uh, 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, every year I walk out of there going F this place. I'm done. Uh, but uh, yeah, if I can, if we can get behind the scenes again, if I can like exhibit there again, or get, we get in this press. Um, yeah, I don't know how much longer I want to do. Like it's the, the whole buying the tickets process. It, it's, it's not stressful, but it's a pain in the ass. Um, you got, you know, mm -hmm. having to sit around for, I don't sit around for an hour for for anybody or anything. So to sit around for an hour waiting to get what they do is they, they put a digital room up. You got to wait an hour and then you, you hopefully your number gets pulled up and you see it. And then you have what 15 minutes to buy your tickets or something like that. And yes. pray your internet connection doesn't, you know, you don't accidentally refresh or crap out or then you're screwed. And the things sell out so damn fast now, which is incredible to me. Because up until 2007, eight, you could walk up the day of and buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was the fire marshal who cut that, who put the limit on tickets. And then once they had the limited number, they started, and then Hollywood got more involved. It, uh, it was comp tickets. That's, that's what's actually brought the number way down is all these yeah. free tickets going to movie stars and stuff. And half of them don't go. That's the pisser. Or they go half a day. Um, and they don't allow a secondary market, which... I, I am totally against, by the way. Like, I think you should be able to sell your damn ticket if you want to. Um, yeah. They're afraid that the scalpers are com will come in. Uh, I don't think the scalpers could compete with the geeks right now. I think they would get shut out. Um, I don't know. The scalpers are, you know, they, they have really robo. exist anymore. I mean, they they do on the the sports level. Yeah, they got bots and stuff like that. But you know, I don't know. I, I think it's. I I just think it sucks and. Unfortunately, it's like you and me go every year, and it's the, the we don't we're taking a spot from somebody else who hasn't gone. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I definitely well, want to check out. Here, so. yeah, I want to. Uh, well, I live in Cal yeah, and I've been going like my entire life. It's like yeah. we, I grew up in San Diego. It was part of like you know that Disneyland. Like yeah, we we're, we're kind of spoiled down there. Uh, but I'd be willing to give it up to go to like New York or Chicago. I want to check those out. I heard they're pretty good. Uh, Robo Brain Ten Thousand says speculations for next season. Speculation for next season. Uh, I think we, I think we're going to get a weird terror reveal, but I think he'll be not in it like the first few episodes. Uh, I think we're going to get Aegis. What's going on with Aegis? Because since we haven't seen anything from them. No, I, I now you're they're going to be a big part of it, but I think um, I don't know what character, but we're going to get a lot more characters. Uh, they're going to start bringing in uh, the safe ones from the comic book. And maybe, made uh, that would be hilarious. Yeah, um, and I think Dot's going to turn into a superhero too. So, yep. 
Uh, no, and I don't know. Jody asks, "Are you are you going to be covering iZombie? Zombie? We will not be covering iZombie. Zombie." Yeah, we can't. Uh, my wife would cover that one, but she's uh, yeah, she can't commit to. to I'm a little tough on it. She has to commit to every episode if we're going to do something, and uh, she can't do that. So yeah, and I don't pull it in uh, over the air anymore because I live in El Cajon, and so uh, I'm far enough away from the transmitter that even with an antenna, I can't get anything. It's just really bad, and they don't offer it. As stupid as it is. Funny thing is, he lives uh, like 12 miles out from uh, a major city. Yeah, <laughs> like like the seventh largest city in America, <laughs> and you can't get the signal. Apparently, you can stop the signal, Joss Whedon. Yeah, and it's in El Cajon. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna Apple's scroll. Find a way. That's right, Apple Crow. They always do, and th there is a way. There is a way to to sell your ticket. Um, it, it's not hard. Uh, once once the initial buying process is done and they've checked your ID, uh, you couldn't just go to preview night. Uh, but you like you, they don't check your ID to your badge. You know, there's the uh, there's the supposed RFID thing, but I know a bunch of people who got uh, got away with that last year who just were flipping badges, and that's that's been happening forever. Uh, but you have to like tag in now. That makes it a yeah. little tough. But if you're tagging in, I mean, they're not checking your ID. You're just tagging in, you know, so they know who's coming and go, supposedly know who's coming and going. Uh, but you could still hand your badge to somebody and they can just tag in and go. Uh, it doesn't stop them. Uh, and yeah. So I had a couple friends uh, who went, I guess uh, another friend couldn't, uh, didn't, couldn't go a couple days. So he just handed his tickets and they went. They didn't have a problem. But he didn't sell them. He just gave them away, which is the nice thing to do. Uh, but it is too big, Jody. It's uh, it's you can't get around it, it. You can't walk the entire floor in a day. I mean, and if you do, yeah. it takes all it, it, it's you can. But it's so frustrating. <laughs> you could not. Um, the only thing that's worse was maybe the streets of London uh, in the summertime was worse than that. But uh, yeah, you cannot get around anymore. It's pretty bad. That's why Dennis goes outside most of the time now. Yeah. Um, Viking bitch asks, do you think Amazon listens to the fans uh, of the show? If we ask to change the way it's viewed, would they care? I uh, think so. I don't think they care. I, it's worth a try. <laughs> I give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Um, I think we, we be better if the creators watch like a video like this or somebody else's video, uh, which they do. And uh, and maybe they they say something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. And we already at, answered Robo Brain Ten Thousands question about what was the purpose of Miss Lynn's bracelets. She can't use her powers without them, or how does it work? It basically just keeps the lint off of her. Yeah, it, I think maybe it focuses her power. No, she still she has focus on the power. It just keeps the lint off. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so next year definitely her bracelets are going to break again, um, but I think it's going to be like our, our, there's going to be some conflict between the Tick and Arthur, and I think we're going to get a little background on the Tick's origin. But I think that's something they're going to tease the entire series. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's something like finale, like they'll tell us where the Tick came from. Finally, and I think it's time. Uh, hey, random question. Uh, what have been your favorite consistently good, fair priced toy figure company <clears throat> for, uh, toy biz, toy biz. Uh, before that it was, uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for Mego. That's, that's gone now, but I've, uh, toy biz, uh, was, they made the best stuff at the best prices. You can get a lot of their stuff at KB for discount and, uh, they make very good stuff. Um, in the eighties, it was Hasbro. Now Hasbro is just horrid. They, they've got the worst business practice. And quite honestly, if you're going to Comic-Con and buying toys, uh, one of the best ones there is Mattel, believe it or not. Because yes. Mattel, you can order all their stuff online, and you can just go and pick it up. And they do uh, some of the DC stuff. And the, their high-end DC stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, Kenner Star Wars was rad for a little while. Um, that uh, Did you guys, any of you guys watch that uh, story on Netflix, uh, the documentary about making toys? They, they did know, the, Kenner, did. the Kenner special is amazing. It's really yeah. cool about the Star Wars figures. And it was just a bunch of dudes in Ohio in a building. 
uh, and and some ladies and uh, being really creative. It's really fun. It's a good watch. Um, totally worth watching. Uh, yeah, uh, the Tick Toys were actually outstanding. Yeah, uh, the Tick Toys um, are awesome. Yep. They they uh they came out in the nineties. Um, I love that their their blister card, their bubbles always yellowed within like a month. Yeah, that was the only weird thing is they always yellowed. Uh, and we do have a prize package that we're going to be sending out to Brian Smart, who uh, was our winner from the first half of the season way long ago that we uh, finally got together. Uh, and yeah, Brian Smart, look for that, and uh, hopefully he'll tweet when he eventually gets it. I'm going to add a couple of extra things because we should have sent it out a long time ago. So I'm gonna I'm gonna. Spice it up a little bit. Put some goodies in there. Just don't tell the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> My package from Columbia is going straight to you, sir. No. <laughs> uh, the Viking bitch says, yeah, we also know he's not a Yeti or a dog. He's not a <laughs> Arthur, am I a Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You guys get him out with your big blue Yeti is what yeah. uh, you call him. <laughs> <laughs> what's an uber oh my god it was funny it was funny um and uh <laughs> over apple crow says i hope i don't win until tick prizes come back around <laughs> oh okay <clears throat> they will be around next uh season uh what is our next prize thing we're doing oh it's uh ash versus evil dead dead yes ash yes. versus evil dead ash versus evil dead we're uh doing a prize package for that so it starts out with a it's a very cool action figure and um then we're gonna throw in some comic books and i'll find some other stuff too um yeah it's gonna be uh, overkill taking an uber was pretty damn funny and oh speaking of action figures i want an overkill action figure i do the mask the to come hands. Off. Did you ever notice that um, if you look on his back, his swords look like just scissors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah um, there's actually on, uh, what was it? They, they showed, I forget where I saw it at, but they had the diagram of the uh, sketches for Overkill's costume and they did the turnarounds on it. And yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like scissors. It looks like scissors. I hit that, his costume is badass, though. It is. It really is. So yeah, we'll. Uh, yeah, we, we got we get a little more time, don't we, Dennis? A few more minutes. Yeah, we got a few more minutes. But, sure. um, yeah, I did my first uh, solo live stream today, and that was fun. <laughs> Had to try it, uh, but uh, my wife was like, "Why didn't you just like, you know, turn it on by yourself and just talk to yourself?" That's how I used to practice. You know, uh, that when I do a couple of solo videos, I like to like run it through uh, when we're recording something. I like to run it through once or type twice to rehearse because I don't. Uh, write anything down. I don't script anything. I'm really freaking horrible at that reading it or, you know, plus I can't see it half the time. So, uh, yeah, today I found, I just went on Twitter, picked two topics and sat down and just started talking and like, uh, you know, and this is going to sound terrible, but I got lucky with the Kevin Smith heart attack thing. <laughs> I'm glad he's okay. I really am. But I'm like, Ooh, something to talk about. Uh, yeah. So, um, that was fun. And it was fun. Like talking to people like with daylight outside. And uh, we had a pretty good viewership. Uh, I need to work on the solo thing a little bit, but that's why I practice. It was, it was interesting. I bet you need I, to work on that solo I, thing. I, I, I missed my dentist. Uh, I did okay. I did. I did. I did uh, way better than I thought I would do. Uh, yeah, Ghost really Ghost World liked it. He said uh, you Thank did great you. earlier, Gary. It was fun, man. He says it came on during my lunch, so it was perfect. Oh, right on. I'll keep that in mind. Ghost World's lunch time for a live stream. No, that, that, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm, I'll do it again. I'll do it again next week. It, it <laughs> Jody says I thought it was gonna be earlier, so I dozed off, and my alarm didn't wake me up in time. You know, Dennis does that all the time during our podcast. I don't feel bad, Jody. It's okay. It's only because your voice <laughs> lulls me to sleep. <laughs> well, that's good. It's nice and soothing. Tell me a story, me Gary. To sleep. <laughs> <laughs> No, Sorry, I, I also I had a. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you while I'm watching you sleep. <laughs> uh, I forget what movie it was. He goes, tell me a story. Fuck you. That's my favorite. <laughs> uh, that was forty eight hours. hours. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of those classic San Francisco movies. Yes. One of the first things I did when I moved up here is I look like I looked everywhere for that parking garage on scott street but it's, it's not there anymore <laughs> no it's not there anymore uh there yeah. used to be a really kick-ass uh chinese bakery right next door to that place 
uh, because my ex brother in law used to be a mechanic uh, right down the street from that place, and he used to go all the time and pick up uh, you know these the, the dumplings, uh, you know pork steam pork dumplings, freaking awesome man! They were oh. huge. They're about like that big. Damn. Yeah. They're so, good up here, by the way. Yeah, yeah but it's, it wasn't there. And I'm like, this doesn't look anything like the movie. Yeah. But I did go to, um, when, when, when people come visit, I don't take them to the touristy parts. I take them to all the, pl- all the iconic places. People have filmed stuff here in the city. Yeah. So you can take a, you go to, uh, what was it? Uh, where did the, uh, the taxi driver get killed in, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the street name. It's like cherry or something like cherry street, cherry street. But it's up. It's really close to my wife's work, uh, where the Zodiac killer, um, one of the victims. But it's like a big tourist attraction now. It's at the corner of a street in this really nice neighborhood. Um, uh, it, it was Patty uh, Hearst's house was two blocks away from my elementary school. Oh, crazy! Yeah, yeah. there's all kinds. Of, you know, Jerry Garcia's house. You could just walk right up to it, and there's still people hanging out in front and getting stoned. It's right near Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, the the uh, the Bullet Street. Well, one of the the big long street with the view uh, is behind my house, about half a mile. And uh, yeah, there's lots of fun things to see around here. Um, oh, what did Ghost World? Uh, what did Jody say? A nooner with Ghost World? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna kind of call it nooner, but I was thinking about. I was supposed to do it in the morning, but I had a. I had a thing. I had oh, a big thing. you know what you should have called it? Afternoon delight. That's a little on the nose again. <laughs> I was gonna call it Monday morning quarter books instead of Monday oh, morning quarterbacks. <laughs> no. I was gonna review like weird comics and then start talking, uh, but no, I didn't. It's just gonna be a podcast. <laughs> See, is that bad, bad, or bad? <laughs> it's just bad. Yeah. Hey, those who try the v- most fail the most. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna we're gonna end this one, but yeah, I had a lot of fun on that thing. This yeah. Really cool. No, uh, it's an awesome, great awesome show, show, dude. Yeah, I mean, if if you haven't watched it yet, you know, I'm, I'm talking at you, Ghost World, because I know sometimes you join us without watching this stuff, and you too, Apple Crow. Sometimes that's awesome. By the way. <laughs> Yeah, um, but go out and watch it, man. It's actually worth it. Um, some good stuff. And um, you know, look at our other stuff, too. I mean, counter Counterpart's awesome. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Seasons 1 and 2 are awesome. Season 3 still needs to be, remains to be seen. Still. Uh, and uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, I'm not going to say Star Trek Discovery because, you know, I, I really didn't like it. And I, you know. Yeah, see, I knew Ghost World wasn't watching it. He says, yeah, he goes, I don't even watch The Tick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you watch Ghost World besides us? Which is fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, <laughs> and Apple Crow says sometimes. <laughs> you, you watch uh, X-Files. There you go. And uh, The Expanse, right? You watch The Expanse. Yes. So there it is there. Um, yeah, X-Files will be back this Wednesday. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, that's our next podcast. That's when we're coming back is on Wednesday. Then, of course, there's Friday night, 8 p.m. live podcast where we like uh, for the chat to come in and join and kind of guide things going. Uh, then it's Ash for Evil Dead and Counterpart, both on Sunday. We move Ash to Sunday. Um, then there's the Monday morning nooner delight and then <laughs> <laughs> that's the name right there the monday the, the morning new, lunar delight lunar delight <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah and uh yeah all, all of our schedule i put up a pretty extensive one on nerdrotic.com it's uh it's quite big and it, it even shows you some of the shows we're going to be doing in the future in the very near future including legion the expanse Westworld, Jessica Jones, uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, yeah, that, that's it's gonna be fun. March and April are gonna be lots of fun. There's lots yeah. of stuff to watch, and then in May there's this dumb little movie coming out. So, what's that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Golden uh, Girls reunion. Yeah, that's it. No, uh, Fifty Shades of Grayer, uh, Hundred Shades of Gray. Uh, I don't know. They actually turn Amish. <laughs> <laughs> they they've gone so far they came back again, and they're the old. They've yeah, they got so kinky that they just decided to go Amish. Now that she's just yeah. flashing her ankles, right? Is that all? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's it. Um, 
<laughs> uh, no, Infinity War. We'll be covering Infinity War. <laughs> My God, there's so many people talking about it. I have to like to I have to tune out three channels. I regularly like because they're just pumping out infinity war videos every day and talking about nothing or they're spoiling like one little thing so i had to sh kind of shut it down it's like i want to be surprised a little <laughs> bit a little bit so yeah uh um, dennis any final words uh, i'm gonna read a couple more comments here and then we'll take off here is uh rubber brain 10,000 says i tried to watch ash versus evil dead season one but the gore um uh, found the raw gore wasn't my cup of tea there you go. That's okay. Yeah. Understandable. It's pretty bad. And uh, Jody loves Monday morning nooner delight. So <laughs> right on. Okay. That's what it is. Yes. It is. It has been named. <laughs> it has been christened. There we go. And so it shall be. Yeah. So what is it? So, <laughs> it, so it shall be written. So it shall be done. <laughs> <laughs> little Ten Commandments uh, action there, right now. Exactly. Uh, Ghost World says, "Oh yeah, uh, uh, in the expanse, we need to have a season three release party." Dude, yes, I think that'd be. Yeah, we should. We should start doing previews, right? Uh, that's probably something we. I know you talked about doing with Ash, and I never did it. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start doing like preview shows where we run down kind of where we're at. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We could do a party. Maybe we could just do it. Do a hangout or something like that. Just us. Yeah. Do. Yeah. And uh, Ghost World, I have not seen Rebels tonight. Um, I did not get a chance. I'm going to watch it on the XD app uh, when it comes out tomorrow, I believe. Uh, it's probably already out on the XD app. I'll, I'll see. I think it's out. Yeah. it's uh, Well, no, it just started on YouTube TV 20 minutes ago, which means it ended because it's only a 20-minute show. But uh, uh, It's got two episodes. There's two oh. episodes. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it right after this. Yeah. There you go. Um, and Jody says, yeah, I love hanging out with you all between the witty banter among Gary, Dennis, and John and the awesome nerdrotic chat fam with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> witty banter? <laughs> witty banter? I don't uh, know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we love hanging out with you guys. This is, seriously, I know we say it all the time, but like, this is the best hobby in the world. And, and once the, it's because of the chat, period. The interaction is our favorite part. Yeah. Um, our, it's not so secret that our favorite thing we love tv recapping but the friday night show and anytime we get to chat with you guys is our favorite thing to do by far so yeah uh, you'll notice a difference if you go back and look at our library of videos when we used to record <laughs> them when it was just us talking to each other yeah. it's like yeah what'd you think oh, that was good yeah it was <laughs> it's definitely different yeah <laughs> well we've also had some practice i mean we've we spent a couple of years where nobody, very few people were listening to us <clears throat> and nobody was watching us. So uh, we've had a lot of time to work out some kinks and we're still, we still have many more to work out. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're kind of a big, just shut up, Alpha Crow. <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> we're huge in Japan, man. <laughs> we're huge in Armenia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, potatoes and, that, and acorns yes <laughs> <laughs> on that note yes uh children of earth please don't let the door hit your ass on the way out spoon <laughs> spoon